What's up, fellow Shield Brothers? Shield Brothers 6 here with your weekly dose of history once again. This video is a little early this week because it happens on a Tuesday. The December is uprising, December 26, 1825, part of my favorite part of the history, the Russian history, the late empire. Here's the background. The Decemberist revolt, or Decemberist uprising, took place in Imperial Russia on the 26th of December. The Decemberists were primarily members of the upper classes who had military backgrounds, some had participated in the Russian occupation of France after the Napoleonic Wars, and some served elsewhere in the Western European Front. A few had been Freemasons, and some were even members of the secret patriotic societies of Russia. The Union of Salvation, the Union of Welfare, the Northern Society, keep in mind the Northern Society, that's an important factor in this lesson today, and the Southern Society. Here's the build-up. Liberal Russian army officers led about 3,000 soldiers in protest against Tsar Nicholas I's assumption of the throne after his elder brother Constantine removed himself from the line of succession. This happened due to the fact that they feared what a conservative Tsar Nicholas would do for the, to, to the liberal army and the liberal strides that had been taken recently in their history. The events. The Northern Society, told you, taking advantage of the brief but confusing in Tigran, following the deaths of Tsar Alexander I, staged an uprising, convinced some of, convincing some of the troops in St. Petersburg to refuse to take a loyalty oath to Nicholas I, and demand instead the ascension of his brother Constantine. The rebellion, however, was poorly organized and easily suppressed. Colonel Prince Sergei Trebedetsky, pardon my Russian, is terrible, who was to be the provisional dictator, fled immediately from the scene. As soon as things going, started going south, he fled. He gave up on his cause. On the morning of the 26th of December, a group of officers commanding 3,000 men assembled in Senate Square, where they refused to swear allegiance to the new Tsar, Nicholas I, proclaiming instead their loyalty to Constantine and their new Decemberist constitution they had written up for the event. They expected to be joined by the rest of the troops stationed in St. Petersburg, but they were sorely disappointed because no one joined them. They were looked upon, they were even rooted for, but no one budged to actually help them. No forces came, no civilians came, no one aided them in their uprising. The revolt was further hampered when it was deserted by a supposed leader, Prince Trubetsky, who was, had a last-minute change of heart and failed to turn up at the square at all. His second command, Colonel Bulatov, also vanished from the scene. He also gave up on the cause. So they lost both of their commanders in a quick succession on the day that this was supposed to happen, the important day of the uprising. The conflict. This uprising, which was quite easily suppressed by Tsar Nicholas I, took place in Peter Square in St. Petersburg, right outside the Senate building. For hours, there was a standoff between 3,000 rebels and about 9,000 loyal troops stationed outside the Senate building, with some desultory shooting back and forth from the rebel side. A vast crowd of civilian onlookers began fraternizing with the rebels and rooting for them even, but did not join because they didn't want to be punished and they knew this was going to end badly for them. But they did start rooting for it, the rebels. Eventually, Nicholas, the new Tsar, appeared in person at the square and sent Count Mikhail Milodorovich, a military hero of the time who was greatly respected by ordinary soldiers, to parley with the rebels because he figured if I send this man's man, this everyday person's hero, to talk to them, they'll listen to him because he's, you know, their hero. He's, and he's the man's man. This will get through to them. But unfortunately, Milodorovich was fatally shot by Piet Kakovics while delivering a public address to defuse the situation. He was there giving a speech, trying to talk to him as comrades, but he was shot. At that same time, a rebellion squad of grenadiers, led by Lieutenant Nikolay Punov, entered the Winter Palace, but they failed to seize it, and they had to retreat. And I included the painting of the said shooting uh, back and forth in the square on the left there. This is the aftermath. Another insurrection by the Trinikov Regiment in the south was also quickly defeated after the diffusion of the northern uprising. It is an extensive investigation afterwards was led by personally by Nicholas Lazar, for t uh, and it resulted in the trial of 289 Decemberists, the execution of five of them, as you can see on the left depicted, Pavel Pestel, Sergei Markov, Apostle, Peter uh, Kakovsk, Mikhail Besov Ryoman and Kangati Rylovid. Sorry for butchering those names. Followed by the imprisonment of 31 and the and then the banishment of the rest to Siberia. 
which isn't much better than imprisonment or death. Resolution. After spending most of the day in fruitless attempts to parley with the rebel forces, Nicholas ordered a cavalry charge which slipped on the icy cobbles in the Russian winter and had to retire in disorder. Eventually, at the end of the day, Nicholas was fed up with these rebels trying to take over his city and not swearing allegiance to him, the rightful czar, and he ordered three artillery pieces to open fire, which had a devastating effect. These three barrages came out of nowhere and just decimated the rebel forces. So to avoid the slaughter, the rebels broke and ran. Some of them were attempting to regroup on the frozen surface of the river, Neva, to the north. However, here too, they were targeted by the artillery and suffered many casualties. And those that did lie dead or dying, or even just, you know, partially wounded or knocked down, the ice was broken for, out from under them by the cannon fire, so they were swept away in the roaring northern river. Then afterwards, a nighttime mopping up operation was led by the loyal army and police units, and the revolt in the north came to an end. Although this would lay the groundworks for many uprisings and inspiration for the youth and what they could think they could do, the Bolsheviks could take some cues for this, as they think they do, and learn from this as they want to rise up later. But this is this uh, rising ends in nothing, but it's a good groundwork that gets laid there. As always, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please leave a like if you did. If you didn't, please leave a dislike. And if you have a comment, a question, or a suggestion, please leave a comment. And as always, this has been Shield Brother 6 with your weekly dose of history. I'll catch you next time.